Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas. It's returned. Oh, oh, it's good to be back with Fallout New Vegas. And in particular, something I've been thinking about for a long time, we need to talk about Lonesome Row. Because ever since I did Fallout 4, Nuka World, Level 1 Survival, I did think at the same time, Lonesome Road. Lonesome Road would be interesting. Because uh, Nuka World isn't really deemed to be like the final challenge of Fallout 4. It's a thing that kind of shows up in terms of like, you know, when it becomes available and when the level recommendation to start is. Probably about half, two thirds of the way through the main game. It was never kind of been pitched as the final challenge. But Lonesome Road, which also conveniently is probably the DLC I've actually shown off the least ever. We kind of, we went for it pretty bloody quickly during You Only Live Once. We just wanted to basically sneak through it as fast as bloody possible with the benefit of Stealth Boys. So we didn't really properly explore it. There's lots here to show I've never shown off before. Lots of really interesting, cool stuff to discuss. Lonesome Road is very much pitched as the final challenge, the final boss in DLC form for the entirety of Fallout New Vegas. In the very trailer of the DLC, Ulysses' wonderful voiceover invites you to bring your best guns. It tells you, bring along all your best stuff, go on, I'll give you a challenge even if you bring the best equipment in the game along. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to not just go there at level 1, because you're totally allowed to do that, but also go along with literally no equipment. No armor, no weapons, no medical equipment, no anything whatsoever. Clear out my inventory, strip myself completely flipping naked, then run over at level 1 to Lonesome Road, and then try and complete it on very hard difficulty. Just for fun. <laughs> This is going to be so bloody interesting. I've planned this. I have some ideas for how it's going to work. I've not done a practice run. So all of this is theoretical. You know what they say about good plans and meeting the enemy. Let's just dive into this and, uh, well, we'll see how this goes. Why don't we? Whoa, easy there. Easy. You've been out cold a couple of days now. Why don't you just relax a second? Get your bearings. Let's see what the damage is. How about your name? Can you tell me your name? Oh, Doc Mitchell, it's good to have you back again. Oh, I've missed you. I've missed you so much. But no, 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 no. For this run, I think there could only be one appropriate name. For a curry who's decided to run screaming naked into Lonesome Road, yes, we will be playing as Mad Bastard. You can't say it's what I'd have picked for you, but if that's your name, that's your name. I promise you, it's well flipping deserved. Oh yeah, that, that's about right, lovely. Oh, I should mention, by the way, in terms of mods, what I've done is I've disabled J Sawyer. This is basically going to be a vanilla playthrough. So very hard mode, J Sawyer is not on, and I'm not going to have hardcore mode on, because unlike survive mode in Fallout 4, hardcore in New Vegas doesn't really add much, to be honest. And also, Lonesome Road is weirdly badly set up for hardcore mode. I'm not sure if they just kind of forgot hardcore mode existed, but uh, basically there's almost no flipping water actually inside Lonesome Road. There's almost no water sources, so it's basically you just need to find a water source and then just fast travel back to it occasionally. It's not desperately interesting, to be perfectly honest. So as a result, I'm going to have hardcore mode of very hard difficulty, no J Sawyer, and any of the mods I do have installed are basically just like textures and stuff like that. So basically purely aesthetic stuff, but the actual gameplay is entirely vanilla. Anyway, let's go set up a character. I think there's like, well, there are a few speech checks inside Lonesome Road, but most of them don't matter. Only one does matter, and the one that does matter, we can work around. So charisma's going to be one, and for once, I'm not going to be tagging speech. Speech is completely irrelevant to this. Intelligence needs to be 10, not just because I need to get skill points up as quickly as humanly possible. There's another reason. We'll get into that in a moment. Strength is going to be an interesting one. In fact, actually, let's just go through to the uh, the one at the end. That will be a useful way to me to figure out what I want to do here. Because plenty of guns inside Lonesome Road require really big strength commitments. Like, strength 7 is not unusual. I can't afford to invest that, so... Uh, Strength 4 should be enough for most of the bits of equipment I want. Perception is, however... Ooh, perception is very, very useful indeed. Endurance, I want to get up as high as possible, but not at the cost of agility. 8 agility, 7 endurance. That's probably okay. I don't know, but that's probably about for the best. It's not the most unconventional build in the world, but it's pretty well suited to Lonesome Road. Look at that. Maybe 
them bullets done your brain some good. Oh my goodness, he didn't say looks like frontal load damage. Because for once, my intelligence is 10 rather than 9. Because of course, yeah, we don't have the opportunity to actually get myself the intelligence implant really early in the game. So I'm just going to go for intelligence 10. Now, let's take a seat on your couch and do your test. And obviously, I've got legs. I've got the mod installed. Let's you look down and see your own body. And now we're going to answer this with absolute total seriousness and not just change the results in a second. Lovely. So, thanks to Intelligence 10, I've got a few skills currently at 25. There's a few skills I basically need to get up in a hurry, like a ludicrous hurry. Because Lonesome Road basically gatekeeps itself by putting a really, really tough anti-low-level character section right up front and centre. But there is a way to get around it that I very, very, very carefully planned out. So hopefully, we can make that work. There's two skills I need to tag immediately to make that work. One is going to be science from 25 to 40. The other is repair 25 up to 40 as well. There's basically literally one way in the game to get a skill to 50 at level 1. And it needs to be one of the like the good natured skills. Because now what I can do is I can get those skills up to 40. And then through the right combination of traits I can boost them to 50 in a second. That still leaves me however with one skill to tag. And I'm kind of divided between two that are both kind of unusual candidates, which is explosives and energy weapons. Energy weapons will help me right at the beginning, but I think it's explosives. I think explosives is the better bet. This is a really unusual thing, by the way. Like, normally you would not tag repair and explosives, but I'm just looking to surviving the first couple of sections in Lonesome Road. Because at the beginning of Lonesome Road... I don't actually have, like, any equipment or anything. So, technically the safest option would actually be energy weapons. But, I think, with my investment in repair and science, we're okay. In which case, I'm going to go for explosives. And you will see why over the coming couple of parts. I know it's really weird to see explosives higher than guns, but I think this is a sensible thing to do. Probably. Anyway, it's probably not. I mean, in fairness, this entire run's not a sensible thing to do. But for this run, that should just about do it. Meanwhile, poor speech is seven and will remain seven for this entire run. Unless I happen to run into, like, uh, one of the proper speech skill books. But I've got no reason to boost that at any point during this entire run now. And here we are with Operation Boost Skills under all circumstances, no matter what it takes. So, good-natured. Arguably, this one hurts me a little bit because, you know, speech is useless to me, Bart is useless to me. Medicine's somewhat useful. Basically, I'm boosting medicine, repair, and science here. And I'm sacrificing energy weapons, explosives, and guns, all of which I'll be using. So, it's a bit of an even trade-off. It's not a good thing on this occasion. Normally, in the game, it is. Because, like, normally when you're playing this game, or at least the way I play this game, like, Bart or well, not so much barter. Speech and medicine repair and science are good, whereas weapon skills you only really pick two. Lonesome Road forces you to be a little bit more diversified. So, good nature's not that great, but it will flipping do for the time being. It buys me an extra five skill points in that science and in that repair. That science repair now at 45. And now, to get them up to 50, I'm going to take the one thing that I know everyone's going to hate me for, because everyone hated this in Fallout 1. And I would never normally take it, and I don't think it's that good in Fallout New Vegas, but I need it to get through this first opening section. And that is skilled. Skilled plus 5 points to every skill, but minus 10% XP gain from now on. I know it is not necessarily that good. I know I would not normally take it. I would love to take Logan's Loophole, because the 30 level cap's not going to impact this run the slightest. It just means I can take drugs, and they last twice as long, and I'll never be addicted. But honestly, drugs in New Vegas aren't the best things, and you're not going to find that many. Like, drugs are really damn good in Fallout 4. In New Vegas, they're okay, but they're not spectacular. I could do without them. I need to take skilled because I need to get my skills up for a couple of really important skill checks and other bits and pieces early in this game. So, that's good natured and skilled. Now, this is normally the point where, of course, I would go around robbing Doc Mitchell's house. I'd steal his first aid boxes and his weapons and his ammo and I'd steal, like, the broken gun over there and his money and probably his hat. But no, no, on this occasion, I'm going to make it up to him. I'm actually going to make it up to him. We're just going to go right over here. Empty dresser. Let's put literally everything I own into his dresser. You know what? And I'm carrying like 90 plus stuff because uh, I've turned Jay Sawyer off. Therefore, I've got all the stuff out of the courier stash. No, no, that wasn't what I wanted to do, damn it. Right, put it all back. Put it all back, yeah? All back. Lovely. Beautiful. 
So yes, I've got no weapons, uh, no apparel. You see there, no caps up in the top right. No aid, no miscellaneous, no ammo. I am literally naked and level one. And out we go into the beautiful bright glow of the world to let the DLC load. There it is. There's Old World Blues. Marvellous. And there's Lonesome Road. That's the one we care about. And there's Honest Hearts. And then we'll have to wait like uh, like 30 seconds for Dead Money. For some reason, Dead Money loads way slower than the others. I don't know why. It's always the last one to load. Like, there we are. There's GRA. But Dead Money's not going to be around for a couple of minutes yet. <laughs> Don't know why that one loads really slowly. Of course, now, you know, I ought to, like, go around all of the mailboxes and steal all of the skill magazines and, you know, ransack the school because the school's got the stealth boy and there's weapon repair kits over in Victor's shack and we could ransack all the houses. There it is! There's bloody dead money. And I could ransack all the houses for some clothing. Then I could sell all the stuff I've taken over to Chet to make some good money. We could be in Ghost Town Gunfight and then use like a bar to check in order to get, uh, yeah, get some free leather armor from Chet. And diddly diddly dee, but no, we're not doing any of that. We're not doing any of that. And also screw the platinum chip and all the rest of it. We're simply running straight over. Down we go towards Lonesome Road. Because yes, you can begin all the DLC. But actually, I think it's all of it. Yeah, in this game, there's nothing to stop you running straight over to all the DLC at level 1 and just activating. I don't think there were any level caps on uh, on any of it. You can just basically go to the start location and begin it if that's what you want to do. Fallout 4 was much more restrictive. It kind of insisted you do it in the uh, in the right order. Fallout 3 was a bit more open, aside from Broken Steel, which, of course, was kind of uh, post-endgame stuff. So that made sense. Now, I'm going to try and avoid, basically, as many different uh, fast travel locations as I can. If I could basically hit no fast travel locations between Good Springs, which is unavoidable, and the Canyon Wreckage, which is also unavoidable, I'll consider that basically a victory. I don't know if I can. I might need to swing by one of them, depending if I come under attack. But hopefully, I can go down a path that avoids... Actually, no, I think I can't really avoid Prim. Uh, because Prim's kind of completely in the way. Because the map kind of narrows over here, because you can't go straight over these rocks. That's impassable. So the only way to avoid Prim would be to loop around the outside of the roller coaster. But I think that would just bring me straight up to different fast drive locations and also a big pile of enemies. So I think Prim I just kind of have to eat because I have to get Prim to pass through that direction. Fortunately, though, if I just stay over here, yeah... The Skydiving Shack and, you know, I'm happy with my character, thank you. Skydiving Shack and a Good Spring Source. I can just basically thread between those uh, and that should be fine. And hopefully, yeah, the Powder Gangers shouldn't mind me. It's not done anything, so just stick between these two areas uh, and we should be fine. Oh yeah, and stick on this side of the road to make sure we stay away from Powder Gangers camp over there. But yeah. Should be a good distance away from that. They won't fire on me. Life is good. So as long as the geckos don't attack me, which hopefully they shouldn't. They don't really, for the most part. They seem pretty passive unless you actually get up into their hills over there. We should be fine now to run straight up in that direction. I say as there's blatantly red on the map. There's blatantly red over there. Please don't go for me. Please don't go for me. Please decide you can't bother to go for me. Nope, you're over there. Lovely. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Straight on. There'll be a couple of geckos that just kind of run over the road and there'll be like the staged fight between the um, the gecko and the rad roach. Stay away from the rads if you can. Never mind, I've just got those rads now and no way to get rid of them. <laughs> no rad away, no rad axe, no anything. Yeah, that one just runs across the road. That's just guaranteed to introduce geckos to you. And then there'll be a rad roach somewhere over there. They'll get involved in a fight with a gecko that'll run out to kill him. But they should not go for me. They are just guaranteed to go for each other. I should just be able to run straight past. Yep, lovely. Don't think we're in any trouble yet. Everything's fine. Actually, I wonder if I stick right over to the right. Maybe I can avoid Prim. If I really stick right over here and try and stay as far away from the marker as possible. I don't know. I'm not even sure I can fit through there. That might well be... Hey, where the hell do you think you're going? Prim is off limits. Thanks for the warning. I'm not actually going to Prim. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Lovely. No, I can't be bothered to speak to you, Lieutenant, either. And... I can get on top of this here, Buzz. Nope. No, I can't find. I need to loop in here. So I'm almost certain I'll hit the... The Prim. Yep, fine. I've hit the Prim fast travel location. That's fine. I'm not considering I need to basically get no XP when I hit Lonesome Road. Like, I think I kind of maybe was a bit generous to myself when I did Fallout 4. Because I basically said, as long as I am level 1 when I hit Nuka World, then that's fine. It counts. But that meant I was allowed to, like, go and get power armor and go and pick up, like, a nuke launcher and stuff. So I'm saying none of that here. I'm going to go as fast and directly as I can. But, yeah, if I pick up, like, a tiny bit of XP just from having to pass for a couple of locations, I'll accept that. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting, which is I need to nip over there, but I want to avoid, yeah, this cinema if possible. But there's ghouls. 
around there. And ghouls are fast and dangerous, and I can't do anything to them, and I definitely won't kill them. Yeah, I think I just saw one creeping over there, in fact. If I can just sneak around the outside of them, that'll be good. Oh, darn it. I've Sorry, I've accidentally triggered that one. Fine. In which case, I'll go through here to avoid the ghouls being triggered. Because if I cut through here, I can basically New Vegas jump up that ledge there. And then I can definitely bypass all of the uh, all of the ghouls. Because they're more over in that direction. So that's fine. If I actually have they... No, nope, I'm still hidden for the moment. Now if I just kind of jump around here. And then just jump up here. Here we go. There we are. New Vegas up there. Then we've kind of just bypassed a bit with ghouls. There's a couple of coyotes in this area, but for the most part, as long as you keep your distance, they will not attack you. There's one like right at the end by the canyon wreckage who'll probably attack me, but I'll probably be through the door before he actually even sees me. So just stay around here over on the right. Should be okay. And here we are. I think I see him on my compass straight ahead of me there. Hello, final boss coyote. Just avoid you. Yes, indeed. I have discovered several locations game. It's fine. Right. Through, 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 through. And out. And come on. There we are. <laughs> Technically, the action music just started playing because that coyote is trying to kill me. But luckily, I think I'm going to get out of here before he gets a bite into my back, which is lovely. So, Lonesome Road. Coordinates you receive lead you to this canyon filled with storm-tossed wreckage. Beyond lies the divide. Lonesome Road is intended for experienced couriers, level 25 or higher. Oh dear. You cannot take companions with you, not a problem. And you can't bring any out with you either. But you can carry whatever equipment and gear you have with you without restriction. So yeah, the game wants me to be level 25 and have the best guns in the game actually with me. So... Never mind. Also, the game even says, like, you know, if it's too difficult, just back off. It's 100% fine. Which is a really interesting story thing as well, we'll get into when that becomes relevant. But uh, yeah, the game was saying, like, you know what, even if you're level 25 and you brought the best guns, you might find this a bit difficult. So feel free to, like, you know, come back for a nice reassuring glass of milk and a cuddle back in the vanilla game if you want to. No! Let's get in here. Level 1 Naked Survival Commence! And welcome once again to another little quest marker there. I think I've just actually picked up... Also, the game says... It always says that. I don't know why it says that. It always says poison removed. I don't know if the game automatically just kind of takes any debuffs off you when you enter a DLC. Even if you haven't actually got any. So there we are. We have now got the pass. The quest has been added to the silo. Now we're going that way. We want to go up here. Because if I recall correctly, I think there's just like a duffel bag up here. Yes, indeed. That's a duffel bag. Lovely. I want to basically grab everything I can. Ooh, flame of fuel. Right, that's good. Hydra and a wrench. Not so good. Welcome to the device. <laughs> I love the divide. And I love Lonesome Road. And yeah, we haven't really ever really properly discussed it or shown it off in detail on the channel. So I'm very, very glad to be doing this. So, having got that, just keep an eye out for toolboxes and whatever. Nothing there. Just now, here we go. I believe we've also got another fast travel location ahead of us here. Just step around to the little kind of troll gap in the ledge there. Yes, indeed. Hopeville silo bunk entrance. So, we're up to a third of the way to level two. Need to hit that level 2 as quickly as possible. And luckily, I should hopefully be able to do that pretty quickly. Because, yes indeed. My skills right now, I have got myself Repair and Science both at 50. Very difficult to do. But yeah, I've actually got two skills at 50. Which is just what I flipping needed. Step inside. And welcome to the first proper section of Lonesome Road. You can go home courier. A very important idea. Not just like the game said, hey, if it's too tough, feel free to go home. No. It's an important plot point that you can go home, which I really love. This this DLC actually has, like, one of my favourite plots of all Fallout DLC. Because it's very subtle. It's very, very subtle indeed. It does a very similar thing to, say, Bioshock 1. Because it plays with the idea of uh, the player and the character and games and how we play games and what that means for a person. Like, what the way that we play a game represents if that were actually a real person inside the game world. Except unlike Bioshock, which very explicitly tells you what it's trying to say, in New Vegas, Lonesome Road, it's much more subtle. It's very, very interesting, and we'll discuss it as it kind of comes up. Anyway, first things first, start looting. Loot literally everything, and we'll explain why in a second. Also, a very important thing here. <laughs> This is hugely important, actually. In fact, literally, the maths that I'm trying to do only just adds up. We've got ourselves here a programmer's digest. That is incredibly important and will be absolutely essential in a moment. So, unlock this here maintenance door. Beautiful. And head over to the right. Because we've got to go and make ourselves a friend. I don't need to be creeping, by the way. There's no enemies just yet. Into this lovely little side room in here. So, we'll go and look at all this stuff in a second. But first up, let's just go over here. Grab myself a quartz, by the way. And activate a bot. 
Oh, cute note, by the way, uh, the shops in this DLC, even though they're automated shops, all take bottle caps, even though they're pre-war shops. There's actually an excuse for it here, which is the army was uh, issuing counterfeit-proof pages, but unfortunately happened to have the exact same size and shape as ordinary bottle caps. So I like the fact there is actually an excuse why you can use bottle caps as currency inside this DLC when it's all pre-war stuff. They put effort into this, damn it. Still, enough of that, let's just unlock the bot pod and say hello to ED. Hello there, ED. And yes, I know it's technically pronounced Eddie, but I prefer ED because I like Mass Effect, so screw it, I'm just going to keep calling Eddie ED. Ralphie, fly far, fly fast! I do like how ED speaks, by the way, in a series of just like, you know, excited beeping, sad beeping, annoyed beeping, angry beeping. <laughs> And stuff like that. And also, how my character seems to be able to perfectly speak E.D. I can just speak that beeping, which is just marvellous. I can have quite detailed conversations with E.D. And I seem to be able to understand the beeping, which is lovely. Anyway, what was that you just played? Confused beeping, says E.D. Well, fortunately, I think actually I can do something with this. Uh, yes, during your boot-up sequence, a recording something about Ralphie. Evasive beeping, you say. Luckily, yes, with Science 35, there's a load of skill checks in conversation in this DLC. Uh, most of them don't do anything. They're just kind of nice detail. And I won't be able to do any of those. Like, really early on this DLC, there's a, I think it's a Survival 75 skill check in a conversation with Ulysses, which very few people will be able to do, and I definitely flipping won't. But fortunately, Science is going to be one of the very few I actually can do. So, happy beeping, it's just junk data. And actually, that's 32 XP. These skill checks might actually get me up to level 2 faster than I'm expecting, which could be very, very useful indeed. Now, I actually need your help, robot, so can you actually help me, please? And I've got the Enhanced Sensors perk, marvellous, just like easy in the base game. Experiment Log 369248-B. iBot DuraFrame Universal Interface Override System. This is Dr. Whitley presiding. We've boosted signal gain and enlarged the overflow buffer system. That should ensure 100% connectivity and control. Eddie, whenever you're ready. Yes, success. <clears throat> um, reporting full success on 369248-B. Eddie was able to interface with and override the test panel in under three seconds. Great job, team. Now let's start on the proposal for the full rollout. So basically just the game telling me, hey, Eddie can open up electronic terminals. Sorry, I mean ED. Definitely don't get it right by mistake there. So yes, electronic overrides, diddly diddly d. And what actually happened to your creator, by the way? Ooh, expository beeping, which fortunately I fully understand. Well, I'm sure he's fine. So that's all we need for now. You're now my companion. Unfortunately, you're kind of my permanent companion, at least for now, actually. There's, there's a bit later without, uh, without ED. But you're my permanent companion for now. You're also immortal because you're required for the plot. So actually, weirdly, if you run out of health, the game says unconscious, which is an odd thing for a robot. But like, there's a vague implication that, like, you know, this robot is sort of sentient or whatever. Ah, and speaking of which, whenever you're vaguely close by to a sort of thing that ED can open, ED just goes and does it automatically. Doesn't really need to be told about it. So... We've got here a commissary terminal, but let's not look at that just yet. That's basically a shop and repair panel. Instead, let's open up literally everything in this room and take everything. Now I'm inside Lonesome Road. I'm allowed to loot to my heart's content, including we've got ourselves. Ah, electron charge packs, electron charge packs, and something to shove them into. An arc welder. Now, this is what's really interesting about this DLC. Because, of course, like, um, there's a bunch of new guns in this DLC. I think there's something around the corner here. Yes, new duffel bag as well. Lovely. So, uh, yeah. In this DLC, there's a bunch of new guns, but if you brought your own guns, for the most part, you don't really care because, like, you've brought better guns anyway. But this challenge run is basically going to mean I have to pay attention to all of those guns. Ah, and we've also got a nice little first aid box hidden around here. Very, very nice indeed. Auto-inject Stimpak. Stimpak 2. Beautiful. Yeah, they're new and exclusive to Lonesome Road. I think you can craft them, actually. With Lonesome Road installed, you can craft them whenever you want with the right skills. But I think this is the only place you actually find them in the wild. If your health is under 50%, automatically applies itself. And that's... Nope. Don't have Lockpick 25 yet. Never mind, eh? Uh, yeah. So we've got some new stuff there. Put that on right away. One breathing mask, that no actual clothing. And yeah, arc welder. Fast firing, uh, damage of 5, DPS of 38. However, that bonus damage versus robots is no flipping joke. I think it's plus 4 damage per shot to power armor, plus 8 damage per shot to robots. So it's like... Two, three times more powerful when hitting a robot. So even though I'm nowhere near the strength or energy skill requirement to use it, even then, it's pretty bloody good. 
So, may as well get that out, ready to be used, because yes, we're going to be needing that sooner rather than later. And over to the commissary terminal. So yeah, it's basically a skill 100 repair thing, which is really cool, because yeah, there's not many of those floating around in the game. Though, unfortunately, that's very expensive, so I'm not really going to be using it for that. Not least as Edie can do some repairing of her own, it's very, very soon indeed. The shop is more interesting, because the shop sells really fun, interesting stuff. In particular, the armour. The shop sells riot gear and riot gear helmets. And yeah, damage threshold 20, guns plus 5, agility plus 1, medium armor. That's damn good. It also weirdly sells a breathing mask, which is odd given there's a breathing mask in the same room as the first shop, but whatever. And yeah, the helmet, sneak sight, and US Army combat arm, which is also pretty damn good. Uh, not as good, obviously, but still pretty darn good there. But yeah, really, really fun stuff. It also sells a whole bunch of drugs, healing items, and yeah, upgrades couple of upgrades, albeit they're ludicrously, stupidly expensive for a couple of guns we haven't even seen yet, in fact. And ammo. That one's sort of interesting, the fact that we can actually trade for ammo with this thing. Speaking of which, let's also, very quickly, sell all my miscellaneous stuff here, because some of it's pretty bloody valuable. Arguably, I could be converting this stuff into, say, weapon repair kits, but yeah, I don't really need weapon repair kits, because uh, Edie can do repairing all by herself. So anything else I need to get rid of? Leave that for now. Basically, anything that can heal, keep it for the time being. But I've now got 157. I'm going to spend that straight away because you should have... Uh, yes, indeed. Electron charge packs. Now, technically, I could also buy overcharge. Damage times 1.25. But there's only 10 of them, to be honest. So, like, the fact you need to reload after just 10 shots means it's not worth it. I will, however, just buy 122 electron charge packs right now. There we are. So I've just spent a whole bunch of money there. But now I've got a good healthy amount in this thing. Because, yeah, it's fast firing and there's a bunch of times in this DLC this will be useful. Because basically, because you could just basically, and by the way, uh, Edie's going to go over to this terminal in a second and activate that for me. Because you could come here at level 1, the way the game stopped you just kind of accidentally walking in here was the first section of this DLC is inside this base. It's small, tight, and confined, and as a result, yeah, there's this situation where, uh, to stop kind of low-level characters coming through, it's full of sentry bots. There are... let me think. One, two, then another three for five. I think there's about seven or eight sentry bots between me and getting into the DLC. And a sentry bot will cause trouble. Like, you know, just one sentry bot is a bit of a problem for a mid-level character with some decent gear. I'm a level 1 character with basically no gear, albeit I do have this thing, which gives me a bit of an advantage. Because, yeah, obviously this thing gets really good bonus damage versus the sentry bots. But they will still knacker me. With their lasers and their missiles, I will be torn to shreds by sentry bots. So, we need to come up with solutions for that. And that's exactly why I've built my character exactly as I have. Now, also we've got ourselves... Yeah, there we are. So, my science is starting to become useful already. I know how to hack game, thank you. There we go, got it there, just by coincidence there, so plus 27 XP, right, halfway to level 2, right, crack open this door, pretty sure this is a safe room, yes indeed, electron charge packs, oh actually there's another one there as well, yeah, all that electron charge packs need that, grab absolutely all of this, sell it all down the line, and just kind of hope for good draws with, aha! Can't remember if this is a guaranteed spawn or not, but I'm glad we've got it. So, we have got ourselves an H&H &H Tools Nail Gun. You see, this one's really interesting. Incredibly low damage, really high DPS. This is ludicrously fast firing. And it's silent, and it's got bonus critical chance and bonus limb damage. So, against the right enemy, i.e. those with either limited or very low damage threshold, this thing can not only do loads of damage, it's also really good at staggering them by crippling limbs. Not least as nails have target DT minus 5. So basically anything with like, you know, 0 to 6 damage threshold, actually, this works surprisingly well against for a nail gun. So it's worth thinking about because, yeah, just the bonus chance to stagger and do critical chances. Yeah, well worth having a think about. So we'll grab that and we'll also grab anything else that's got some good value in it. We've now got two good, albeit they're both kind of, you know, fast firing but very weak guns. So not necessarily that useful against the sentry bot, which are big and tanky and have damage threshold, but it'll do. And, ah, we've got a flipping bobby pit. That's a relief, because even when I get my lock pick up, if I literally don't have a bobby pin, can't do any of that. Now, broken down iBot. Five of these dotted around this DLC. All of them have circuit boards. Pick them up, 
give ED an upgrade. Interestingly, it's not actually a particular circuit board corresponding to a particular upgrade. Like the first upgrade, no matter which circuit board you find first, or which robot rather, will always give you the same upgrade. I think it just kind of stacks. So it's more like upgrading ED to unlock ED's functions rather than giving this robot's functions to ED, I guess. So now ED can do repairs, which is good because repairing is really, really bloody expensive at the terminals, so I don't want to do it there. So now I can chat to ED, get a weapon repaired up. Lovely. Also, I will have all of this off you because I can sell that and swap it for more ammo. Speaking of which, ED, 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 right. We need to do this right away, by the way. Let's see how good it is. I can't remember how good it actually is. So, talk to ED. And conveniently, with a repair of 25, I've actually got a skill check right in ED's dialogue here, which is actually useful, because I think this is still worth XP. So, repair 25, good multi-tool suite you've got there. Can you actually make stuff with it? And indeed, ED says she can. Marvellous, that's another 23 XP right there. If I had guns 25, I could actually have another little skill check there. There's some more stuff, actually. Replay audio logs, access multi-tools. Yeah, so basically like Veronica, he acts as like a travelling workbench so we can make some stuff. Lovely. Can you repair my weapon, ED? Happy beeping. And there we are. So I'm pretty sure my weapon's condition's just gone up a little bit there. Hopefully enough to push it slightly up. Is that up to? Hang on, that's... I think it was five already, so I'm not sure this made any difference. That's fine. Let's just set that as well. Now we've got ourselves two good weapons here. Lovely. Except this is where this starts getting a bit interesting. So if we just head back to the terminal now, of course, we've got something to consider. Uh, go over to the shop, which is... Of course, we can, like, you know, sell all this kind of random crap that we're picking up over in miscellaneous. Don't sell the warm bobby pin. I need that. I'd sell all of this stuff absolutely for a further 76 caps, and I could trade that straight in for ammo. The arc welder thing is now worth, now it's been improved, 1,580 caps. If I could find, say, a buying magazine, it would be even more if I could find the right bit of equipment, for example. Now that is worth quite a few, say, grenades or flashbangs or things like that. In fact, actually, that would let me buy a riot gear helmet right now. Now that is potentially worth having a think about because, you know, it's got some good damage threshold on it. In fact, actually, it would get me about a third of the way to US Army combat armor, which is good. Damage threshold 18 is damn good. So I'll be finding lots of very valuable equipment and potentially I can sell it. But if I sell it, I don't have it anymore. I don't dare sell this arc welder right now. I need it because there's going to be flipping sentry bots coming up. But it's one of the interesting choices I'm going to have to make here in level 1 naked survival. Which I just love as a concept. Anyway, time for things to start getting a bit more dangerous. The first sentry bots coming up. So in we go. And what I need to do is just head straight up these steps. And I'm going to go into caution in a second. But I don't need to worry about that yet because right now my sneak's really low. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, this is not the time for a conversation. What the hell do you think you're doing? Ah, oh, Whitley, there you are. Orders from Colonel Autumn. He feels the iBot DuraFrame project isn't advancing quickly enough. I'm too. You didn't even disengage his damage avoidance protocols. You're hurting him. Don't be ridiculous. It's just a machine. See here. I've already increased the navigation system's efficiency by 65%. Get the hell out of here! Fine, Whitley. It's your lab. <laughs> At least until I tell the Colonel about this. So yes, indeed, just a bit of a hatchet job inside New Vegas against Colonel Autumn from Fallout 3 for whatever reason. <laughs> Alright, fine. Whatever. But yes, it does indeed sound like uh, Dr. Whitley really cared about you, E.D. Oh, sad beeping. Tell me about this Ralphie. What's going on, E.D.? Evasive beeping doesn't want to tell me just yet. And yes, indeed, General Winters. Uh, and I know about a Colonel Autumn, but you've just mentioned a General Winters, apparently, because I just speak beeping. And more lonely beeping, too. Don't like the sound of this Dr. Grant, anyway. Angry beeping, including some violent shaking. <laughs> Don't have to tell me I'd have totally beaten her up, too. Satisfied beeping. Oh, dear. Language, Edie. Language. <laughs> Embarrassed beeping. Love Edie so flipping much. Right, we need to get moving because literally we're currently in caution. Fortunately, unlike in Fallout 4, uh, yeah, the game actually freezes during conversation. So, actually, while we're passing by, freeze it. Ooh, more nails. Like nails. Ooh, steady. Steady could be a fuse. Right, round here, there is a sentry bot in that room. But we do not need to go and fight it because there is a terminal right flipping here. So completely ignore it. 
Here we are. Level 2 access. Easy. So it's science 25. We're good. There we go. Another 27 XP there. So just quickly log on here. Deactivate the second level robot security. And that guy is now down. And that's 45. Oh, yes. And that is level 2 right there. Now, that is very, very important. Because I've also got... This is really, like, right down to the wire. So I've got 50 science and 15 skill points. Science just became 65. I know this looks utterly lunacy on toast, but trust me here, I know what I'm doing. So I've just got science up to 65, and we're going to be needing that. So I've now got repair 50, science 65. This is incredibly important. Like, without these two stats, I don't think it's really even possible, except by just getting really lucky and sprinting. And even then, it would be very unlikely. It would just be sheer chance whether you do it or not to actually get through into the DLC proper. So, level 2, science 65, repair 50. That's what we need. And now, well, technically, I can actually have light touch straight away. There's an unusual one to see at level 2. So, my light armor, plus 5% critical chance. No, I think we're good, because medium armor, when it becomes available, I'll totally be using that instead. Confirmed bachelor, however. Good idea. Uh, odd fact, uh, back in the base game, the NCR is pretty evenly divided between men and women. I've always thought there's slightly more men, but there's plenty of women NCR troopers. This DLC, not the case. There's loads of irradiated Legion and uh, NCR, so... Already the balance is towards male, because the Legion's all male. But there are no irradiated female troopers. All of the NCR marked men are male. 100% of them. So as a result of that, confirmed bachelor, I'm basically just giving myself 10% plus damage against all of the marked men. So well worth having there, absolutely. So we'll take that perk and move straight on. Lovely. So, through here... Just quickly ransack this room as well, because actually, are you dead or are you darn? I was hoping you'd just be deactivated so I could actually kill you with like sneak attacks, and then that will be good. Still, I can grab all of this, that'll be worth some stuff down the line. Now, just ransack this room, basically, take absolutely everything I can. Scrap electronic can't open that desk, unfortunately. Yeah, don't have that much. Fine, this is where things start getting difficult. There's another sentry bot around the corner around here. This one, there's no off switch for. What there is, however, if I'm very lucky before it sees me, is some armor. Though actually, I'm better off... Mm, if I can avoid it, you know what, screw it. Go, 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 quickly. Now, take that, take the battery, take all of the missiles, because they're very, very valuable. Right, grab here, grab some money. Doctor's bag, valuable. Right, round here, but this guy... Hopefully, yes, you have got actual armor on you. Spot on. So, change over the armor. Sneak plus two, agility plus one. That's actually kind of useful, to be perfectly honest. Agility is good, sneak is good. So, we'll take that. Purified water, turpentine. Bowie knife is not great, but it's good condition. That's a lot of money. So, we'll be grabbing that and just grab this as well. Oh, yeah. More nails, wonder glue, conductors. This is all money, and I need money. But the real problem is, in this room, there's going to be... A sentry bot. I'm already in caution. Okay, go, 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 go. Here we go. Now, terminal here, 50 repair. This is why we needed 50 repair. So, repair terminal. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's already shooting at me. <laughs> Hack the security turrets. The turrets are now my friends. Go, go, go. Ouch, I've been shot, but that's fine. Right, I'm stuck over here in a thing now. Right, get around the back of it if I can. And what's the range on this thing? Not great, apparently. Right, let's see if this works, because... Now, if we can, everyone just dogpile on this thing. Reload. Don't turn to me. Don't turn to me. Don't turn to me. But you see here, oh, it's turning to me. No, it is it. It is. It's shooting at me, but it's almost dead. Oh, it's dead. Oh, it totally, he totally hit me with a missile in the last minute. But that's defense just saved my life. Do you see that? The health actually went down there. <laughs> the health went down, but I'm fine. Right. So that's me versus one sentry bot. That's the first sentry bot. There's, I think, five or six more. But we've got plans for them. How are you doing, by the way? The turret is... The turret died. That's fine. That turret gave its life the time might live. So, another sentry bot here. We've got ourselves electron charge packs. Useful. Missile times three. Scrap electronics. Good. Good, 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 good. Now, as for myself, I know I'm badly injured. It's fine. How many doctor's bags? I've got one doctor's bag. Okay. I'm just going to use that. Fine. I'm going to use that now. I am, however, not going to use my stim packs. They're too valuable. Instead, I'm going to be using... Actually, yeah, I've got this quartz. It's going to make my vision go weird, but it's okay. I'm going to have that, and I'm going to also have some purified water. 
Before we make any more decisions, go in here. This room, for the time being, is safe. I can't do anything with this terminal just yet. I think, actually, possibly Edie can activate it, but until I've got the... Until I've got the... No, until I've got the actual codes, I think I can do. One first aid box, hidden back here. Cat eye! Basically useless, but whatever. Uh, right, now. There is, however, some good stuff in here. One, broken down sentry bot with Bowie knife in its back. Valuable. Grab all the missiles. Missiles I won't be using because the thing that fires missiles in this game doesn't fire missiles, it fires rockets. So instead, I want that. Grab myself one. Arc welder. Valuable. Open desk. Grab all of this stuff. Lovely. You. You're going to have flipping armor on you. Uh, yes, yes you are. Good. So, Bowie knife. And I've actually got, remember, pretty decent repair for this point in the game. So I can actually get this stuff up repaired pretty well. Electron charge pack. Another scout. More scout armor. More bowie knives. Good. So that there is a pretty good combination of stuff I've just picked up. Very, very nice indeed, in fact. Let's stay away from the rats for the second. How much money am I carrying around? Is it worth me... I forgot to put the scout armor on before the fight began. Good job, me. How much can I improve this by? 16%. You know what, I'll take it. I'll take one, but I'll sell the other, because the value is really high. As for the Bowie knives, uh, I might be able to... I'll combine the, the weakest two, but honestly, yeah, they're probably worth just selling individually. I'll keep one, but honestly, I don't really need it. The Arc Welder. Now, I could slightly improve my Arc Welder, but it's not going to make much difference. I'm not going to be using this that much going forward. So, these instead, I'm going to sell, together with the Bowie knives... And that is going to be worth an awful lot of money. So this is going to be a good trip. Though actually, before I do that, before I do that, one, just grab the one to glue. Because there is one more room, and I'm also just going to step out of the rads. I'm going to wait for an hour to get rid of the filter. There we are, that's worn off, lovely. <laughs> Don't like the filter. Quartz is a very odd thing. So, say hello to security. You're probably feeling nervous in this room. You don't need to. Uh, what's actually going on in this area is ultimately I'm going to get some security codes out of that desk or off that guy or whatever. We're going to activate that thing. When that activates, those three guys are going to pour into this room. And in addition, I believe we can probably see, yes, those two guys are also going to pour in this room. So basically it's going to be me versus five sentry bots. And you just saw how I did against one sentry bot, albeit I was naked at the time and I didn't even need to be. Bad idea, basically. Bad idea. There are some turrets through there that will be helping me out against these two. So these two aren't so much of a problem. But those three need to be eliminated. And that is exactly why I have put literally everything I can. Every trait, every perk, everything that I have available to me has gone into science. I've just piled everything to get to myself up to being level 265 science. Because, we'll grab this gun by the way, and we'll help myself to all of your stuff. Don't worry, ransacking his body doesn't do anything. His uniform's okay, but not great. I can open his desk as well, get myself some stuff, some money, some silo network security codes, and go on some vodka just in case I need strength plus one for some reason. This terminal right here is locked hard. Thanks to everything I've done, science is 65. And I picked up a programmer's digest earlier. Literally, you need to do everything you can to boost science, but you can get science to 75 for just a second at this point in Lonesome Road. Now this is really important because... Programmer's Digest. Now we've got Science 75. Let's just quickly hack this. There we are. Got that. Another 45 XP. Very, very nice indeed. Now, what we can do is we can deactivate the personal sentry systems. So those three sentry bots have been taken out of the game. This is ludicrously, ludicrously important. And once they've been deactivated, we can open up the doors. There we are. And we can see there, they have been deactivated. So those doors are now open, but the sentry bots are dead. They've been deactivated. Everything is lovely. Now that's also very, very nice indeed because we've got ourselves a pulse grenade at the back here together with a plasma mine. The first mine in the game in fact. And there's a second one right there. Some more batteries. Very valuable. We can sell those down the line. Beautiful. But yeah, these guys not currently active. Better and better. At the back here, together with an ammo box that gives me... You just look at it. There's so much energy ammunition. This is why potentially energy weapons are a good way to go. Because just for some reason, you're just showered in energy ammunition. We've got ourselves a plasma rifle. Very, very nice indeed. So now, all of a sudden, things starting to look a little bit more under control. 
Damage 21, DPS 36. Definitely worth having uh, ED upgrade that potentially later. I mean, repair it, sorry, to be precise. Right, let's get that in production. Not much ammo for it yet, but still, it's a powerful, powerful little thing. Of course, because uh, don't forget over on the old microfusion cells, microfusion cells also give you a slight reduction to target damage threshold. So it's a little bit more powerful than you think it might be against armored foes. Right. So we've got all of that now. Do not actually know. I think you can go and do this now because until I press the button, that's not the trigger. So go over here. Go and activate that. Go on. Go on. In you go. Lovely. Well done. So they activate that. Programs Digest is worn off. That's fine. So that gets activated. But until I pull this lever, nothing happens. But I don't want to pull this lever just yet because I can go and sort myself out. Because right now I'm at half health. But don't worry, we can fix that. Oh, and while I'm remembering to go back to the terminal at the beginning, by the way, I entirely forgot there was actually a room I didn't show off. If rather than going straight up the stairs, which you naturally want to do because you want to deal with that, you instead loop around here. There's a little side room around the back here. It's nothing major. I think there's just like a few boxes and ammo crates or something in here. Yeah, one box, can't even open it. Another box... You know what? I'll just take all this and then immediately sell it in a second. One hardlocked ammo crate there. One new cola and a bottle cap. You know what? Sure. Why not? It's better than not having those things. And I've also got some NCR stuff off one of those corpses as well. Sell all that nice and quickly. So, stuff I can now sell. One marked scout armor. Got one already. Don't need another. There'll be plenty of it lying around. So that's 700 caps right there bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Do not sell the bobby pin. Do not accidentally sell the bobby pin, damn it. Junk gets me to 1,060. Arc welders represent about another 1,000 between them, so sell them apart from the good one I actually want. Beautiful. Keep one bowie knife just on the off chance I need it, because yeah, if you sneak up behind someone, it is a good kind of like way of getting a good sneak attack critical, because it's got the bonus critical damage. So just sell the weaker two of those. Keep the better one. Keep the nail gun, definitely keep the mines, keep the plasma rifle, keep the pulse grenades. 10mm, will I actually need that? You know what, it weighs 3, I'll keep it just in case I need like emergency last minute ammo and everything else is empty. But I very much doubt I'll be needing that. That I think is everything I want to sell for the time being. Yeah, that, actually no, 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 don't forget, missiles. Missiles times 11. Don't have a missile launcher, very unlikely to actually have or need one. It's just stuff that the sentry bots drop. Sell all that, 3,000 caps. Now suddenly, things are looking a little bit on the better side. We're already kind of most of the way towards US Army combat armor, if that's what I wanted to have, damn it. I could have a flipping riot gear helmet right now. But what I should start off with is some basic stuff. Radaway, Radex, let's just get some basic stuff there. Stim packs, good, let's just spend some money on that. It never hurts to have a few stim packs. Sadly, it's not regenerated its electron charge packs yet, but I've got plenty of that. You know what? I'm going to spend a little bit of money on microfusion cells just so my plasma rifle's actually got some stuff in it. Because right now I've got precious little stuff that actually hits hard. The stuff that actually does, worth it. By any chance, and this is a bit of a waste, I'm just going to check how much it would theoretically cost. The repair interface, the plasma rifle. I could pay to get that up now. No. Hold off. The money is better saved, I'd say. Spend a thousand on getting that up, but that gives me no benefit. No benefit, no benefit, no benefit. No, that's fine. In fact, that's the biggest waste of money imaginable. <laughs> Blimey. Uh, definitely not that either. Yeah. Hold off for the time being. Blimey, 6,500 to repair a flipping nail gun for plus... And admittedly, plus two damage would be a huge increase in the DPS. But no, let's not do that. Right. On to the final challenge before we crack on. And having done what I've just done, this should now be a lot easier. Because, yeah, if I hadn't done what I'd just done, then the moment I push that button that ED unlocked in that room, then as a result, basically, immediately after that point, the three sentry bots I've deactivated would have stormed into the room. <laughs> so, that wouldn't have worked well. That wouldn't have been good at all. Though, actually, it has made me think. Uh, this guy, when I deactivated him, I could search him. Those ones in that room I wasn't allowed to search. That might mean I'm allowed to kill them. It's a bit of a waste of ammo, but if I am allowed to kill them, it might be worth it just for the sake of actually, uh, yeah, just for the sake of actually getting the XP and also looting the rockets off their body. Assuming this doesn't wake them up. If it wakes them up, this is a bad idea. The knife does nothing. I can yell rah as much as I want. It's literally not doing a thing. Yeah, that's... Uh, 
<laughs> That's a bit underwhelming. Sadly, I can't just kill them for free XP, tragically. They've been deactivated. Job well done as far as I'm concerned. Now, next up, what I need to do is... Push this button. Those two guys activate and run at me. Nothing I can do about them whatsoever. What I can do, however, if Edie can just avoid detonating it, is... Those mines. I'm just going to put one safety mine in here. Call this a safety mine, by the way. It's probably more likely to blow me up than them, but whatever. Right, one mine right there, including, weirdly, the plasma just kind of leaked off it a bit, but that's fine, right? One mine, and that should not be detonated by ED. Right, go into hidden mode, get out the big gun, and no, not that one, this one. Hit the button and hope. Yep, open the silo bunker doors. Now, those guys activate and run out, but all of the turrets out in the corridor are already on my side. So, as a result, boom, 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 and he walks straight into that. Now, back away. Hopefully, Edie draws the attention. That plasmine didn't do much, to be perfectly honest, but if I can, just boom, 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 boom. He's going down. He's going down. He's taking a lot of damage. Right. Taking a bit more. Back off here. This is going well so far. But this is the point when the three from that room would storm in here. And that's the point where this goes horribly wrong. And... Oh, he's not facing this way. He's not facing this way. He's not facing this way. And... Dead. Oh, there's another one yet, though. Obviously, the other one's flipping there. Right. Need to let him go down. I'm pretty sure at this point, unfortunately, all the turrets are dead. And... No, that's the already dead one. Oh, bloody hell. Right. Where's he? Need to let... Oh, he's coming this way. I think he's coming this way. Let's get some vat shots. No, he's over there. Where's he bloody going? Oh, I think he's taking on the... Oh, it's flipping Edie. Edie's decided to YOLO charge him. Oh, Edie's unconscious. Oh, dear. Wait, hang on. Caution. Oh, I'm not in danger. He doesn't know where I flipping am. Oh, this could still work. No, danger. He knows where I am. I think he saw me through the window, actually. Right, where are you? Where are you? Wait, wait where are you? You're... There we are. Okay, fine. Fine. That's okay. Right. Are there any more turrets back here? Because I'm pretty sure this turret here is... Let's just close this door if we can. Buy myself a minute here to figure out where we are. Where's he and what can we do? He's coming here. Okay. Potentially, the best thing I can do at this point is... Plasma long range him. Right, and... Boom! 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 And slow moving plasma, damn it. Slow moving plasma... Doesn't do much. If I hear a missile being fired, I just need to get out the way. Yep, like there. Like just that. That was... Oh, bloody hell. Edie, do you want to get up, please? Oh, I have got one pulse grenade. Oh, that could be just the flipping thing I need. Yeah, that one pulse grenade. One pulse grenade. Go, 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 go. Don't see me, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. Get nice and close, 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 nice and close. Hello! I've got- I know how VATS works. I've got a pulse grenade for you. I really hope this does some good work. I invested in flipping- Oh no! <laughs> it did do some good work. He just hit me with a rocket afterwards. Wait, he's going over that way, but he doesn't know where I am exactly. And... Boom! That'll do! Right, get out the thing. Finish him off. Go! And up and around 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 and go 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 screw you ha oh I think the auto inject stimpack kind of fixed me as well that was really helpful yeah you don't get up unfortunately and that's it that's it done that is the first section complete the game doesn't really want you to do that on flipping you know level one and two with no weaponry but whatever but now this is where things get interesting. Because this lovely back room where these guys lived, this is just sexy central. We've got, well, can't get in there. But there were some ECPs. Here is a first aid box. Another bobby pin. More stim packs. Desk. Pre-war money. Another programmer's digest. Marvellous. Shipping containers. Now, these things are marvellous. We haven't really seen these yet. I think this is the first ones you run into. These things are amazing. The military shipping crates. Eight plasma grenades. All right. Sexy. Two doctor's bags, medics, purified water, stim pack, and super stim pack. Seriously, these things are amazing. So that's nice. Go over here, clear you out as well of your stuff. I want to have all your missiles and also your rockets. We'll actually be needing those later. Anything else back here? Ah, got new things, but sadly can't quite get into it. Actually, I'm amazed I'm not up to flipping level three yet, but I will be momentarily. Right, get you, grab you. Ah, 
March Trooper Armor. Damage Threshold at 7. Guns plus 2. Endurance plus 1. So a tiny bit better than what I've got there. But not by a huge amount. I'll take that as well. Thank you. Nothing else back here. I think we're done. I really hope... Yes, we're done. That there is the exit from this hell bunker that I'm currently living in. No, tragically, I can't repair one type of marked armor with another. That's a shame. Now, do I want six sneak and agility or seven guns? No, I'll take the agility and the sneak, quite frankly. These other two I'll just sell. So, do one stim pack. Honestly, doesn't actually help that much, but you know what? I'm happy with it. And also do myself, yeah, that'll be another uh, 50 hit points over time from the new cola. Let's just go and sell all that beautiful, beautiful junk and see where that leaves us. Also, I think I completely missed. Ooh, there were in fact nuka colas and more quartzers under the desk here. Very nice. Add all that together. That's another 1,200 caps heading my way. Beautiful. Now, what, if anything, do I want to swap that stuff for? Because some of this might be pretty good. Those grenades aren't great. Flashbangs are mm, kind of mixed. We'll get to those later. Don't think we need one of those in a hurry. I'll take one auto-inject stim pack. They have saved my life a little bit this episode. And over in ammo... What sort of ammo am I willing to buy, if any? You know what? I'll buy four flipping microfusion overchargers. Why the hell not, eh? Lovely. Not much else I've got, but I'll also spend 30 just on some overcharge for the flipping arc welder. Again, lacking in options. Still got over 3,000 caps. Very, very good indeed. Save it up. There'll be some valuable stuff to buy later. Plus, different terminals when they kind of renew their inventory. We can buy more stim packs. We can keep ourselves alive with that money. And potentially, in the future, buy some really, really fancy stuff. Because, yeah, the proper Elite Riot geary stuff, that's pretty damn nice. But, yeah, just imagine that fight, by the way, if during it another three sentry bots had just kind of piled out of that room over there and run through. It's just impossible. I think if you want to do a low-level run on this DLC, you absolutely have to be able to get your science to 75. And the way I've shown you is literally the only way that you can get science to 75 this flipping early. But we have made it. We have made it to the end of the silo. We have made it to the door to Hopeville. Let's step outside and meet Ulysses for the first time. Indirectly, at least. There's your signal. Faint, but there. You came. Good. Curious, maybe. You walked the Mojave without a flag on your back. That'll end soon. Can't walk the long 15 and not have a nation's shadow fall on you. Maybe you just need to be tested. Or you believe in nothing. We'll see. Of course, what Ulysses says depends on which faction you've got close to. So in this case, because I literally have no faction alignment with anyone, he's just said, I don't have a flag on my back, but that can't last forever. Or maybe I just want to stage or whatever. Basically, he's just saying, yeah, you haven't got close to any faction. So it's nice that the game does actually reflect that. Now, what exactly is going on? Yeah, tell me, what exactly is this place? The Divide. This place is a slice of it. Old military. Can still smell the pride. And the fear. Hope of the old world. Wrapped in fencing. Covered in storm. Got new inhabitants now. Other than ghosts. More recent. Recruits. And of course we're talking about the marked men there. And you can see what I mean about there being a million different skill checks going on this DLC. So fortunately with my science of 50. I can actually say yeah it looks like it was hit with earthquakes or underground detonations. America sleeps in the divide. Giants beneath the earth. You saw one locked in the silo beneath you. There's more. Only takes a few of them, locked to the low ground, to tear apart the earth and cast dust, sand, ash into the skies above. You'll see the extent, the miles of it, soon enough. You need to see it. Walk it. For now, eyes alert. Watch the streets below. There's still life in the divide. Threats other than the storms and wind. New inhabitants. And of course, we've already met the marked men, albeit they're corpses. But unfortunately, not all of them are dead. These new inhabitants, not natives, most of them, came with a duty, purpose, ready to kill each other. The divide was stronger. Left marks on them too. Not bear, not bull. Now, radiation. 
nations mark them, made them equal in history's eyes. As vicious as the storms are, these shadows of legion, of NCR, silhouettes of things to come. And now I can comment on the bodies I saw in the silos. Soldiers look like they've been flayed. And Sir Legion, the ones in the silos were already dead. Uh, don't go after No, never telling me don't go after say. Not least does the voice acting is amazing. It's always just a pleasure to hear Ulysses talking, to be honest. So, yeah. Bodies I saw in the silo. If you saw their corpses, you saw mercy. Got what they deserved. Coming to the divide. The bear and bull. NCR Legion. Came in waves, before and after, right into the invisible fires, the wind and ground collapsing beneath them. Once under different flags, now they are equal in their hatred of the trespassers, you and I. This is a very elaborate way of saying, now they work together and will murder me. So, no, unfortunately, the marked NCR and marked Legion will not attack each other, as cool as that would be. And indeed, I've never seen corpses mutilated by that. Radiation is enough to cause those wounds. What's actually happened here? Even as the fires here burned them from within, the winds of the Divide tore their skin, exposed them, screaming to the sky. And just as the Divide tears at them, so they tear at each other, for sport, like some tribal scarification. Falling back to their history, maybe. No matter what they suffer, the radiation, fire of the Divide, sustains them, makes them stronger. And with medicine of 35, which I just have thanks to the various traits and intelligence I have, if they've become ghouls, the radiation would strengthen them, heal their wounds, not scars. There's truth in your words. In what I've seen of their tactics, movements, recovery, those wounds, they couldn't live otherwise. The divine winds have torn the skin from many of them. Maybe the radiation is the only thing keeping them walking. They camp near silos, warheads. No way to cleanse the radiation. Makes them hard to kill there. Have to draw them out. So we've got another little bit of information there, of course. Now we know they're going to kind of huddle around radiated areas, draw them out. You'll have a bit of an easier time. Now, let's just actually get to who are you and what do you want? I'm a courier. Courier 6. Was Courier 6. Like you. And not like you. In all the ways that matter. Spent too many years looking for you. Now letting you come to me. Thought carrying that ship would end you. No. You got lives in you. Hard to kill. Storms, bullets, sand and wind. Yet still you walk. For now. And tragically, with Perception 5, I can't quite actually meet that particular one. Though actually, I think even if I fail that, I start working my way up to an achievement. So I'm just going to give that a go now, because I think that's true. I know you. What we have in common, though, isn't in the words we traded. You may not know my voice, but we've walked the same places. The long 15 to Prim. That wasn't the only road you ever walked. I've been to your home, the place you kept returning to. May not be the place you were born, or the place you gave life to. Same thing. People forget couriers can keep communities alive until the day they're gone and their breath catches in their throat. Yes, indeed. So even though I actually failed that one, I have still managed to get the first of six references to my past that Ulysses is willing to say if you go for the right dialogue options and ask him about that. So, you were the one who sent the radio message that, sorry, I forgot to actually listen to before we began this DLC, but there was a radio message inviting me to come here. Not my given name. Close enough. Took it from history. Found it in a book. It's an old world name. Ulysses lived a long time ago, long before the old world set fire to itself. He made a mark without being myth. Had to fight during a time when his world had two flags, and he had to make 
than one. And indeed, as I hope I said earlier, yeah, survival 75 flipping skill checks, so... And indeed, with speech... Ah, my speech is currently at... Why is my speech at 17? How did I get up to 17? Oh, uh, between... It was 7, then it was raised to 17 by uh, skilled and good-natured. So unfortunately, nothing we can do there. But with intelligence of 7, I apparently am familiar with Ulysses, Odysseus, Romanized. History. Yes. Ulysses walked a hard road. A general, like Caesar and Oliver. He was brown and stubborn, gave him strength on the battlefield. He led his side to victory, turned two flags into one. That's when he lost. When the fighting was done, the sickness took hold. Lesson there, if history is to be believed, one you should heed. You know what? That's not an unfair summation of, you know, some of the themes in the Odyssey. That's fair enough. And indeed, we did just get up to, uh, to level 3. We haven't even got the big XP dump from this quest, but we are already at level 3. Marvellous. So, can't actually pass either of those checks. So, let's move on from the name back to the job you refused. Actually, I'm not sure I do know about that yet, because I haven't actually been into Prim yet. But I guess he did just partly tell me, so it's fine. Alright, courier. If the why of it matters to you. So, of course, this was the man who was originally scheduled to carry the chip until he discovered I was the person who'd carry it in reserve, so therefore he dropped out to let me carry it, assuming therefore I'd be killed, but I'm hard to kill. I like how the plot still works even if you do run straight here, because the setup he's talking about is the setup that's actually the beginning of the game, so therefore there's no way to make the plot break. We all have death following us. Only a question of how close. You dodged it. For a time. You're good at that. Talent for it. With that chip weighing you down, a burden. Let's death move a little faster without me pulling the trigger. So yes indeed, you were supposed to carry the chip. Meant to. No. Never. You're a burden. Weigh you down long enough to let death catch up to you. But you survived. There was death in that package, and while the chip is important to old world ghosts, no, you are more dangerous than that chip ever could be. Maybe why you found each other, little piece of the old world speaking to you, waiting for you to wake something else up with it. And while we'll get into exactly what he's referring to down the line, yes, he's basically implying that I would have some sort of connection to the chip, because the chip, of course, can be plugged into the little console at Fortification Hill and used to activate a big old world army, basically a form of a weapon of mass destruction, the huge kind of army of death bots once they've been upgraded to be all kind of army bots and whatever. So uh, he seems to be suggesting I'd have a connection to that sort of thing, a tiny item that could cause huge devastation. And we'll get back to that as time goes by. Now, if you want to be dead, why wait? Promises to keep to others. And alive he's dangerous enough left to the land. The land has its way. If I wanted you dead, you would have met sooner. Not sure that's the way this ends. Might be that history needs to have its say. If not, then messages will do. And finally, how exactly are you speaking through Edie? The robot with you. All of them are machines, radios, old world tech reshaped with new hands, historians, couriers carrying messages. Seen them as I've walked the divide, tending other machines. That one. Sealed inside the Hopeville silo. Sign America is waking up. It will follow you, obey you, carry it until we are face to face. Then there will be no more need for it to carry my words. And indeed, enough talking, you went to a lot of trouble to lure me here, so what exactly are we doing, Ulysses? America sleeps ahead of you. It's nightmares filled with quakes, storms. You'll need to find your own path. That means waking America's spears up from their slumber. There's ways. Warheads set off collapse. Warheads could open the gates again. You're resourceful. 
that machine, robot with you, can help you find the warheads you need to destroy. And their trigger, the detonator. The way ahead is below. The tools are there. The rest, up to you. And unfortunately, my speech is not high enough to actually push this any further right now. So fine, I'll find a trigger, and then I'm coming for you. Because that's all the instruction I'm getting from him. The Divide will send its worst against you. It may break you. We'll see if you're stronger. Road gets rougher from here. Courier. Left marks for you. Colors will tell the way if you're smart. They'll lead you to your home one more time. Lead to the ending of it. Maybe remind you why you wander. And we are up to level 3. Marvellous. Now, priority here. Lockpick needs to be up to 25. Now, other priorities. We need to get potentially some good weapons going on here. Explosive 30 is a good point. Energy weapons getting up another 10 points wouldn't hurt either. Yeah, that's a good starting point right there. Done. But as soon as this conversation is over, I'm straight into flipping caution, by the way. Straight into flipping caution. Let's just hide in a corner here and hope there's no flipping trouble. And the quest has been added to the job, but the silo is complete. Which should hopefully give me... I thought there was going to be a big dump of XP there. Is there not a big dump of XP for finishing the silo? Maybe there isn't. I thought there was, but I may be misremembering. Speaking of which, we've got... Yeah, we've got trouble down there. Luckily, it's not quite as close as you might think it would be. Because fortunately, indeed... Yes, I know how you enter vats. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, fortunately, it's not quite as close as you think it might be. Because I've got the enhanced sensor perk. Okay, we don't need that noise, though. That, that's fine. Maybe what we do instead is we just... Wait until morning, if at all possible. Because I actually want to be able to see what I'm doing here. There we go. You're going to get very bored of Edie making that noise, by the way. Edie makes that noise an awful, awful flipping lot. Please don't run and make trouble, all right? Just stay here, please, for the time being. So, here we are. We have made it to the outskirts of the first big area, Hopeville, which is not linear in the slightest. It's a big open area. There's stuff going on over there. There's a big area over there. There's more around the back over there. There's more we can open up around the rear as well. It's a Big, kind of big open square area with lots of different ways through it. And uh, right now, I haven't got that much to my name. I've got some decent-ish starting guns, uh, but it's not going to be enough for the time being. And this thing's almost got flipping no ammo whatsoever. So, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we are going to explore Hopeville, which is filled with marked men who are vicious and have incredibly powerful guns... Uh, and also massively outnumber me. There are tricks that we can do to get around them. Ways to go, directions, tactics, approaches. I've got this planned out. I'm just not sure whether it's actually going to flipping work. So, we will pick this up next week, ladies and gentlemen. But, welcome to the beginning of Fallout New Vegas Lonesome Road Level 1 Naked Survival. <laughs> Glad to be back in New Vegas. It's always wonderful to be playing New Vegas. And it's wonderful to be playing Lonesome Road. It's the one I really haven't paid enough attention to, quite frankly. It's a great bit of DLC. Genuinely a great bit of DLC. And I'm hoping we can, you know, get through it. Despite being currently level 3 and having only the bare bones of an Arsenal armor. That we've managed to actually pick off the dead in the silo. And hopefully we can get some better stuff going on in Hopeville. And that is next week, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And welcome back to Fallout New Vegas here in Lonesome Road. Thank you very much and goodbye. No, sadly, I cannot be the Santa Claus of murder tonight. So apparently even though this thing is... Oh, no, no, you can't. No, you most certainly can't. Okay. Is that the symbol meaning I'm about to pull her over? Yep, there we are. There we... Oh! I feel like she didn't necessarily survive that. No, she's very dead.